So today I'm going to do this sort of annual camp out check um, because mine's so easy to get to now I've got rid of the air conditioning. Um, I just sort of check it annually, listen to the tensioner bearing, stuff like that. First thing to do then, remove the wheel and remove the wheel arch liner. So once you've got your um, wheel arch liner out, as you can see there's a suspension, it leaves a great big gap for you to get straight in on the engine and you can see the new alternator I fitted some time ago and uh, the next thing we're going to do is remove the alternator belt. Um, it's interesting that this belt is not a Ferrari one, it's actually um, an aftermarket one that's better than the Ferrari one. The Ferrari one's made of plastic and it's rubbish. So um, the thing to do is undo that bracket, which I've already done, and then you just hook the alternator off. Uh, sorry, the alternator belt off and water pump belt, so you lift the alternator like, like so, and then the belt is slack, and then you can just remove it like that. This is the non-Ferrari belt that I bought. Um, <clears throat> this is because it's made of a much better material. It's almost like the cam belt material. Um, it's reinforced. Um, virtually impossible to break under normal situations and if it slips it doesn't uh, just disintegrate like the Ferrari belt does. The Ferrari belt is just rubbish so um, this has been on here for a while now and it's absolutely fine. So a worthy upgrade um, if you're having trouble with your belts breaking. So to give yourself a bit more clearance if you just have the airbox uh, off like that you can see the top of the cam belt cover there and that allows that just to come up so you can hook it out a bit like one of those sort of Christmas Chinese puzzles. Like I say apologies I'm filming this on my phone so it's not very good quality but you just hook it out because you can get up higher you can get it clear sort of thing and then it just comes out like so and there you go and there's your tensioner bearing obviously but you can see the tensioner bearing here which means you can put your stethoscope, when you're listening to it, you can actually put your stethoscope on that nut there while the engine is running and listen to it and make sure everything's okay, but we'll do that later. So we're going to check the belt tension. If the belt was slack for some reason, that's about right, that feels good already. If the belt was slack, it's 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and about a quarter of an inch of movement either way. Thumb and forefinger, 45, 45. That already feels right, but you rotate the engine and just check it like that. I'm not gonna loosen the tensioner and do the ver you know other systems like Verrill, etc., etc., or the Ferrari system, which you can read about. My quick rule of thumb is 45, 45, thumb and forefinger. We already know that, that feels about right. Okay, these belts have been on here for about a year. They've done about sort of, 5,000 miles, 6,000 miles, something like that. So the next thing is to undo the, um, uh, the bracket for the alternator here and slide it out of the way on the adjustment so that moves out the way. Um, the air conditioning used to be bolted here and at the top but now it's not so it's very easy to get to now um, and the air conditioning is redundant anyway without using another type of pump. It's completely useless and it's extra weight so I've got rid gotten rid of it. Um, the, uh, so you just undo this, this cover here and uh, just slide it off. I'm trying to do this whilst filming on my phone. You just slide it off there like that. There's only a few bolts holding it on. And that gets that nice and clear. Plenty of room in here. The nice thing about working on this, this car is you can really get to everything. You can get around the whole engine, really. Um, starter motor is probably the more tricky thing to get to. My flat floor pan has kept everything kind of nice and clean, which I'm very pleased about. My goodness, look at that. Look at that corrosion on there, though. That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, that hasn't been... That's just sort of sitting. Um, so I'll, we'll listen particularly carefully to that. Um, it's just... You know, water gets in, you know, in this wheel arch, which the engine's not very well protected and it gets damp. And in England, you know, water just gets in, um, unfortunately. The other one doesn't look too bad, but this one, for some reason, seems to be, um, it's got a, quite a little bit of corrosion on there. I'm sure the bearing's okay because it's packed in grease and sealed, so it's any surface corrosion on here. But, um, yeah, I shall clean it up with a wire brush and have a look at it, I think. Anyway.
So again, checking belt tension, you measure the long side of the belt and do the twist test, twist test, rotate the engine and check it. Again, long side of the belt here, check it, check it, feel the slack. Right, so I basically started the engine a couple of times and checking the belts all the way around. Uh, several different revolutions of the engine, all is fine. So um, we're good to put the covers back on. I'm happy with the belts are good. Um, so uh, yeah, it was a good little check. Next thing I'm going to do is listen to these these tensioner bearings. Like I say, that's just surface rust on that one, but um, uh, I'm going to maybe they're different. Um, uh, you know the the way the water the moisture swirls in here. Even though I've got a flat floor pan on now, uh, the moisture probably swirls in there and somehow clings to that more than that for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, it's rather strange, but anyway, uh, I shall keep an eye on that one because um, they were both new at the same time. If for some reason there's a fair amount of slack, more than you know, in a very short space of time, the culprit could be this bearing. You know that there could be play in this bearing. Now, obviously, the only real way to measure play in that bearing is to loosen the belt. But I have found them where you can actually feel the play in them if you wiggle them that way. Uh, because the belt tension doesn't affect them so you can if if they're gone and they are prone to these bearings going you can feel slack in them so you don't want to feel anything in there any slack and you've got yourself a big job to fix it so the next thing to do is listen to the uh, belt tensioners here and here with the engine running just to make sure that everything's nice and smooth and they're not making any funny noises or early signs of any problems uh, I'm going to put the uh, belt guards back on for that uh, because even with the belt guards on there is a peripheral hole on each side so you can in fact uh, get to them with the spanner but also you can put your stethoscope on there to listen to them so next stop is belts on a uh, belt guards on and then listen to the engine running and listen to the uh, these uh, uh, tension of bearings just to make sure they're absolutely fine so a nice little check to do on the water pump is uh, spin it with your hands like that and if it spins smoothly without any noise and doesn't spin going round and round and round it just spins and stops spins and stops it means the seal is good and the bearings good and feel it for roughness it's kind of it should be just have a little bit of friction there but it shouldn't be notchy at all it should be smooth and this one's smooth so here's the stethoscope I'm sure you've all seen one of these before but uh, this you attach to anything you want to listen to and it transmits into a little diaphragm and goes up the air tubes straight into your into your lugs so you can hear everything that the engine's doing and what it sounds like obviously you won't be able to hear me talking while the engine's running so basically I'm just going to touch the probe onto that nut there um, so I'm trying to film and look at the same time. But I'm going to touch probe onto that nut there. And that means I can listen to the engine. Obviously, don't stick it down there. It's very difficult to get it in there anyway. But don't stick it down there because that's where the, the wheel is. So you want to go bang on the centre there and just listen to it. And then listen to the other one. Okay, I've just completed the check as you saw and everything is fine everything as expected is fine so wheel arch liner back in and then wheel back on job done okay there we go liners back in and finally airbox on and uh, just check everything over and uh, ready to take it for a test run right thanks for watching guys